survive Montezuma's revenge. You arcade freaks gotta think. And you computer nuts, you gotta react. Because there's a hundred rooms crawling with critters. So if you can't take the heat, better make some smart decisions. Now you done it. Where's my torch? Ah, what? No, 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 no. You're flunking out. Try the room. No. Let's start over. There's a hundred rooms crawling with critters. Hey, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive. And today we're gonna to be diving into Montezuma's Revenge. And at first I was just gonna do it on my Commodore and my Atari and kind of compare those two versions. But I started looking out there and there's like nine different systems that they made this game for. So I wanted to check it out on all of them. Over here I have the ZX Spectrum version running. They don't even call that one Montezuma's Revenge. They call that Panama Joe. Uh, only other system that does it that way, but just thought it was interesting diving into all the different games I've got my floppy disk here on one side. It has the Commodore 64 version on the other side. I've got my Atari 800XL version. So it was really nice to have this floppy. It's an original. I don't know if a lot of people have the original of the Montezuma Revenge. I know there's a lot of crack copies out there and everything, but this is actually, I have the original game here for both of these systems. So loaded it up, tried it out, and now I'm just gonna share with you guys all the different systems, nine different systems we're gonna be checking out today. So go ahead, pull up a chair, grab a joystick, and let's get started. So first we're going to look at the different systems we're going to be checking out today playing Montezuma's Revenge. So at the very top left hand corner we got the Apple II, then we're going to look at the Atari 2600, the Atari 5200, the Atari 800XL, the Commodore 64, ColecoVision, the DOS version, the ZX Spectrum, and the Sega Master System. So let's go ahead and check out gameplay of all these systems. So one of the trademark things that I like to do here at Floppy Deep Dive is put all the screens and all the systems up at once so you can check them out. And I just like it. I like it's a good comparison to be able to see everything side by side and see how the gameplay uh, works and how it looks. And on this one, I actually even left the sound, so hopefully it's not too annoying. But uh, I, I, I lowered it down, so hopefully uh, it, you could watch this and, and not bother you. But anyway, so I love looking at all the different screens and the different ones. And again, these are in the exact same order as those systems we just looked at. So up here in the top left-hand corner, that's your Apple II. And then the next to it would be the Atari 2600, the Atari 5200. Then in the middle row, Atari 800XL, your Commodore 64, and your ColecoVision. And then at the bottom, you've got your DOS version, your ZX Spectrum, and your Sega Master System. And again, I just love how this works. And if you don't know much about the Montezuma's Revenge, it's a game that came out in 1984 on all these different systems. And it was programmed by Robert Yeager, and he was only 16 years old when he created this game. Uh, published by Parker Brothers, uh, we all know from like Monopoly and so forth. And of course, Montezuma's Revenge ties to when you go down to Mexico and uh, you get a uh, drink the water and you get diarrhea or whatever the case might be. Never thought I would ever say diarrhea in one of my floppy deep dives, but that's what Montezuma's Revenge is. But anyway, all these came out then but then in 1988 it was published for the Sega Master System which had better graphics and sound and so forth and, and you'll see that and that's the very last one down here on the bottom row uh, how it did advance and, and very cool very cool how they did it so basically what it is is you control this character and this character's name is Panama Joe uh, aka Pedro and you move them around from room and room in this different labyrinth that they're in in this underground pyramid and it's like a 16th century Aztec temple and it's filled with enemies and obstacles and traps and dangers 
and the objects to score points by gathering jewels and killing enemies and so forth and you you got to find different keys to open doors and collect and use equipment such as torches and swords and amulets and so forth to be able to avoid and defeat you know all the challenges that are out there there's also laser gates and conveyor belts and disappearing floors and fire pits and you move around by jumping and running and sliding down poles and climbing ladders and their different enemies are like skulls and snakes and spiders and you only have so much uh, inventory slots that you can actually hold it's 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 just really cool the pyramid's like nine floors deep and it's again i just love this game the simplicity of it but it is so fun i want to dive into all the different the different systems so you can see them up close besides just here all these screens on here at once so let's get more detailed into it so you can see it and see all the different little bit things that are different and if whatever your favorite system is you know make sure you put it down in comments and which one did you love to play so that's all the systems that's them all on the screen so now let's dive into them one by one and look at the gameplay and look at some of the little differences within the gameplay so first we're going to look at the apple II version i love how it comes in and sliding down the pole and then you're going down into the labyrinth here and love the detail like just like red bricks different than the other systems where it has that and i'm just going to talk about a few differences and then just be quiet and let you see some of the gameplay and how the gameplay goes but they're all very very similar and the levels are all very very similar just a little bit different within the graphics only a few systems where it just was completely different and the levels are just completely different loved how it looked loved you know getting the keys going through the doors and all these were pretty pretty much standard in most of the different versions I struggled a little bit trying to go down the ladder and getting in the right place, but really very sim simple game. It's just more of the going through the different puzzles, trying to get over the different floors and so forth. And I like the Apple II. Again, I'm not a big fan of the Apple II sound, which everybody knows isn't the greatest in the world. But as for the graphics of this game and, and, and the gameplay and, and just the feel of the game, it was great. It's, it's, it's no different than, than, than the other ones. It's, it's just played really well. And uh, like I said, love the little differences, like when they're coming in, sliding down the pole and so forth. But let's just watch a little bit of the different gameplay. So next we're going to be looking at the Atari 2600 and the Atari 2600 was the one that was I found the hardest because it's different than every other system when it came to the levels and how it played out. So I had to figure it out again because the other ones I was getting used to the different levels and how it was set up. But when it was the Atari 2600, I struggled. So I had to figure out that I had to, that first level go down and go down on the rope and then get down the ladder instead of, you know, going the different way to be able to get the key and jump the skull and up. And then, of course, when you get to the second room, you can't see it as well because it has that... As soon as you walk through there is the wall that you're going to run into which is not the same of just like the other systems so out of all of them like i said my biggest struggle was here on the atari 2600 it even though the gameplay was was you know looked similar and you could tell that it is montezuma's revenge and the graphics aren't bad compared to the others it's just everything was so much more different and the levels were so different. I'm sure if I took the time and had time to play it and get fully adjusted and figure stuff out, I would do just fine. But starting scratch and doing it cold, it was definitely a little bit difficult. So next we're going to be looking at the, the Atari 5200. And I found that the Atari 5200 definitely looked much better, obviously, than the Atari 2600. Looked more like the computer system. Uh, when you got into it and I like the gameplay uh, love when I get the different keys and so forth it plays the La Cucaracha uh, just very very cool and this game looks very very similar to the Atari 800XL so you'll see when we play the next system that it also 
looks very, very close, and these two are very similar of how they did it, if not exactly the same. Let's go ahead and just watch some gameplay of the 5200. So now we're going to look at the Atari 800XL and you can climb down into the pyramid and again this looks very very the colors everything the levels uh, everything looks very very similar again not, if not exact to the Atari uh, 5200. Loved how it played. I thought it played very smooth. It was easy to control. Uh, the graphics are very similar to the, all the other ones. Uh, to, to be able to control it. Try to go here the same different direction as I did on the other one just so you could see it. Collecting those jewels, playing a little like Kukuracha. So let's just check out a little bit of the gameplay of the Atari 800XL. So now we're going to look at the Commodore 64 and this one has an intro screen and I love that they have the intro screen on it. The other one is none of them just kind of just started got right into it like the other did. But here with the Commodore 64 you can see it's definitely different. The gameplay feels like it's moving a little bit faster than it did on the Atari when I was playing it. See how everything seems a little bit quicker, but just wanted to watch the gameplay a little bit so you could watch the Commodore 64. This is the one that I know the best and love. Can't say that I'm the best at it or my controls of it are the best, but uh, definitely like that. So next we're going to look at the ColecoVision and it also had an intro. I like how it comes down again with the pole. This one, he looks more like a cowboy to me. It looks like he has like a cowboy hat on. Um, it's just different. The character definitely looks different in this ColecoVision than it does on the other ones, if you could see. And obviously the colors within the levels are different. But the level itself is still exactly the same. Moves pretty quick on this one too. I love when it gets goes through the fire and it has the smoke just gives you that poop of air that goes up. <laughs> I didn't like dying. I just thought that was cool. How they, all of them do that, but. Dang spider chasing me. And everything seems to be moving pretty fast in these. Like I said, the skulls seem like they're going faster and everything on these different plays. But the ClicoVision I found to be really good. Besides just a little bit difference in the looks and so forth, 
it, it played really well and, and, and enjoyed playing this one. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one. So next we're going to be looking at the DOS version. This one also comes in sliding down the pole. Some do that, some don't. Uh, I never saw it starting that way with the Commodore 64, so I wasn't used to that. But at looking at these different versions, we had one. I was using the keyboard to be able to play this, so it wasn't the most smooth uh, controls or best controls that I had. I don't fault the game for it. That's more my fault to make it the keyboard and not using the joystick on there. But wanted to check out the DOS version. The DOS version actually looks pretty good. So yeah, I think this one looks pretty good. I like the colors and the combinations that they did with it. Uh, it looks very, very similar to all the other ones. So let's go ahead now and check out the other, the other version. In this version, it's called Panama Joe. It's not called Montezuma's Revenge. But the levels are stayed are set up the same. As you can see, this one here, go and get the key. Watch out for the skull on the first level here. So we got the sounds when we pick up the key, but there's no sounds when, when you're walking or anything else. It's just silent. Skull's definitely going much slower, as you can see. Has that usual uh, ZX Spectrum look that we're used to on games. Just a little bit different, everything a little bit different, just due to that machine. But still, looks set up just like the Montezuma's Revenge. Come in here, you got your snake, got your torch. So let's just watch this one play for a little bit and check out what the ZF Spectrum is all about. So next we're going to look at the fanciest version and this one here is Montezuma's Revenge on the Sega Master System and I've never played this before until this one and uh, I thought it was kind of cool they add this musical screen in the beginning and shows you climbing up into the temple here. I like both of them lowering down into the temple. So coming in here and now choosing our gameplay of what we want to play. And as you can see, the guy's much more detailed. The graphics all much more detailed. Gives you a little backstory to stuff. But as you can see, when you come down to this level, even though your guy looks more detailed, the level looks the same. Still have the skull turning. Still playing a lot of Cucaracho when you pick up your key. Everything's just a little bit more uh, defined. Is your snake's a little bit cooler? Look at that snake's got a rattlesnake tail. Got bones in the wall. So just a lot of cool. Just they just definitely upgraded it a lot by the time when they released this one in 1988. And of course, it's a more powerful system, and it just looks really good. Still get that puff of smoke when you die.
Now that was different. The mask to pick up there. Spider looks really cool. Up, oh, still a wall got me. Sword looks good there. Jewels look much more detailed with the diamond shape. So that's the Sega Master System. So let's go ahead and get this video wrapped up and close it up for today. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and saw the different systems, nine different systems out there and how they all played. Love checking them all out. Love giving it a little bit of play on all of them just to see how the systems are just a little bit different. Played the Sega Master Systems for the first time. Played Panama Joe here for the first time and just loved it. So I hope you loved it too. If you did, please subscribe. Check out my Instagram and Twitter pages out there where I do daily posts. And until next Next time, thank you for joining me on another floppy deep dive. Let's start over. There's a hundred rooms crawling with critters.